Hey everybody, Bill Dean here. So I thought what I'd show you here, my light in the way, by the way, is that I'm going to show how I do uh, fiber optic lighting on a model. Uh, this part is actually 3D printed. I believe it was printed on a, uh, what was it? A form. I think it's on a form printer, like a form 2. Uh, so it's a resin printer, SLA. Uh, this is a part for my Millennium Falcon model. Um, I'm actually getting ready to glue. I already glued in these uh, fiber optics already. I don't know if you can see it. I'll put that right over here. Maybe you can see the glue. Uh, what is it? There we go. You can see where I glued it in. This is just uh, epoxy. You know, two-part epoxy, five-minute hardener. So that I'm putting in new new lights that I'll glue in. I can't glue them in all at once because they all get in the way of each other as you're trying to glue. So I remove the lights and I put them back in and I and then I'm going to glue a section of lights in. So how do I go about doing this? So I have, I've cut pieces to a certain length um, that allow me to bundle these together. I bundle all, I'll bundle all my lights together and I'll trim them to even length and then I have an LED that will feed into these to light them up. So what I'm going to do that, I'm going to separate some of the lights out though, so I'm going to take some of them and put them in, into a uh, light box that I'm going to make. And in the light box, it'll actually have like a timer that will turn on and off. So it'll turn the LED on and off, so those lights will blink. And that way I'll have some blinking lights to add some, a little bit more life to the model when I'm done. Uh, but initially, they're just I'm just putting in lights right now. So what I do is I turn them to the length, that they're basically all the same length. And then I take a soldering iron and I heat up the very tip. Don't actually touch it. The heat of the soldering iron as you get close will start melting the fiber optic. You make a little bulb at the end. I call it a mushroom. I don't know if you can see it in the here or not. I'm not sure if it's if it'll allow me to focus that close. Uh, but at the very end of this, uh, wrong way, of course. I'm sure it'll focus that close. But at the very end, you can see a little flaring at it. That's the little mushroom that you make. It's really small, but it's larger than the diameter of the of the fiber optic. So in the model that I have here that was printed, uh, there are a bunch of holes inside. I don't know if you can see them. There, there they are. So you can see the holes. And I'm just, I just take and cut the end that doesn't have the bowl on it. I slide it into one of the holes. And I use my light because my vision is not the greatest, as you can tell, I wear glasses. So I use my magnifying loop so I can see the hole a little better, it looks larger. Makes it easier for me to line it up and get the, the optic into the hole. And once I get in the hole, I just pull it through. And we get a nice uh, set of lights. And then to, to test it, to get here where you can see it, I will put the... Uh, these strands under the light here, as you can see, they light up. So that's what we're doing here. We're putting those in and we're putting and they light up as we go. So that's how, that's basically all you do. And you just keep doing that over and over and over again. Now I have two different sizes. Uh, there's a thicker uh, fiber optic than the other one. Uh, I can't remember what the sizes are. I think this is 0.05. I think the other ones are 0.25 find another red so I can do side by side comparison of a thin red and a thick red. Let's see that's another thick red. There, there's a thin red. So we get a thin red and a thick red so you can see the two. Um, both these already have the bulbs on or the mushrooms on the end because I've already put these lights in. Made sure I have what I wanted. Uh, you know and I'm getting ready to like I said I just put put them in I'm gonna glue them at this point. So there's the two filaments side by side. I don't know if I can do it here. There, so I got both of them there. Both of them are mushroomed at the end. You can see the larger diameter one has a larger mushroom of course. But there are some larger holes inside this piece. So if you're looking at through the holes here you can see the larger holes. Uh, like right here there's a large hole or these are where these over here are smaller holes. So where the larger holes are, I use the larger size filament. And where it's obviously the smaller holes are the smaller filament. So the large filament actually won't fit in the smaller holes, by the way. So you you really have to use two sizes of filament. Or, I say filament, sorry. 
two sides of the fiber optic. And uh, you know, you just insert them and, and mix the lights however you want the lights to mix. Um, I'm using more red on this panel right now, uh, just the way I want it to look. It's you know, choice of how you hook up your lights is all dependent upon you as the person who's putting them in. You know, so it's up to it's totally 100% up to you and your preferences. And you can see that they're lighting up there. You can see the other lights I've already done uh, from put here where we can see it a little better, and I'll kind of get them up. And you see all the lights are all lit up, and they're not lit up, they're lit up, they're not lit up. But that's what I'm working on. And I thought I'd just show everybody, because some people have asked before, I showed my lights before on my Twitter page, and I just wanted to show what it looks like, uh, how I do it. Um, I just don't want to set my soldering iron right now, but like I said, you don't actually physically touch it. If you touch it, it will actually really melt the, the the plastic, because really the fiber optic is just a plastic uh, tube, plastic wire basically. Um, so it's really not glass; it's plastic because it's more flexible than glass and it won't break as easy. Though they will break, but be, so you have to be kind of sort sort of careful with it. Um, I buy my uh, fiber optic on eBay from I forgot the guy's name now. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll find the link and I'll uh, I'll post it in the video. But this is a bundle of it. It, it is like I said, 0.25 millimeter, and the larger size is 0.5 millimeter. So this is what I use. This is what I'm doing. Um, so I'm working on my Millennium Falcon model. This is inside uh, the cockpit area. Uh, this is an overhead part for the cockpit. I'm, it's an upgraded part, not the original part that comes with the model. Um, let's see, you can see uh, over on the wall over there, part of the hull of the Millennium Falcon over there, and behind me on the other wall is another part of the Millennium Falcon. Um, the parts that are not put on is because there's a lot of work that still needs to go on those parts on the frame on that one there. A lot of parts, that's where the engines and stuff have to go. So there's a lot of work. Uh, so there's still a lot of work to go on this model. But I'm working on the the, uh, the cockpit area right now. Uh, so that's, what, that's why I'm where I'm at. Um, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. And uh, I just thought I'd show you how I do my fiber optics. And I thought that might be interesting for some people. You can do the same thing. You can print uh, 3D models and 3D printing and put in fiber optics into it to make it do whatever you want it to do. And if you use like a, a clear or a translucent um, filament when you're printing in 3D, you could actually use the fiber optic to go inside and light up that, maybe make the whole thing glow. Like maybe do a lightsaber and put, put a fiber optic in there and make it glow all the way. So it's just depending on what you're trying to do. Other way to do it, that would just be, as you're printing in a clear or a translucent material, you could just put the LED at the very end of whatever the optic is, like like I said, a lightsaber for for Darth Vader, and you could have it. It will transmit the light down the length of that, and that that might work pretty well too. So it just depends on how you want to do it. I mean, it's basically the same thing we did in, in the cellular phone industry. That's how you light up the keypad. Uh, you know, you don't put typically uh, you know 10 plus LEDs behind. This is old keyboard, old style. We had actual keys. Um, they they put light tubing, light piping around it, and they only had a few LEDs and it lit up the light piping. The light piping would actually lit, lit the keys up. So that's how they did it there. It's the same thing as using fiber optic, but it's just using a different material, different way of doing it. So just different ways of doing, the, reach, achieving the same goal. Um, just like on this, so I, this is a 3D printed model. Um, this is the uh, Star Destroyer, Super uh, Super Star Destroyer from uh, Star Wars. Um, this one did not print correctly. The, there, the, the cones that are supposed to be where the engines are did not come out. Uh, so I'm printing it right now on my other printer over here, which you probably hear the noise of the fan and everything running in the background here. Um, I'm printing it in this orientation this time. Or I'm sorry. This orientation this time with the tip up. So it has a lot more support material, but then my engines will be on the very end and they won't have any support material, so that hopefully that will help those show up. Uh, the purpose of this is I'm going to have 
these painted and hung in the background and I'm going to have the Millennium Falcon more in the foreground and it'll be hanging from my ceiling in my media room so that way you get the feeling like they're behind it chasing the Millennium Falcon so that's that's the, the current plan or my idea um, it would be nice if I could kind of go in and throw in you know hollow out some spots in here and put some fiber optic in this model and you know make little LED lights that light up the areas like in the bridge section here and stuff like that to make it look more alive but you know that's again where would I hide the batteries in, in, on this, you know, to hide that, right? It's easy to hide the batteries inside the Millennium Falcon. My Millennium Falcon model will be about 34 inches long when it's complete, way over 29 pounds. So that's, that's almost 10 kilos that it will weigh when it's done. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that's the current plan anyway. I uh, just, like I said, thought I'd show you how I do fiber optic. And uh, that's, that's where I'm at at the moment. So I'm putting those in, getting ready to glue in the next batch. I get those glued in. I'll do then I'll do the next batch and get them glued in. Do the next batch, get those glued in, and then I'll start re reconstructing the rest of the uh, Lillian Falcon cockpit. Somewhere I have another part that I've already done fiber optics and glued on. So I can find it here. So this broke. I'm 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 redoing it. Unfortunately, too bad. This is a the computer terminal that it's in the uh, area where you know where Luke and, and everybody was at uh, when they played on the the Jark table. We were playing the game with with uh, Chewie, and uh, this is the computer terminal that was over there. I bring my light down closer here. I can uh, see if I can light it up here. Uh, come on, one of these cameras. Uh, can I get that? Yeah. So now you can see the lights are lighting up. So that's what we're doing. As you can see, this broke right here. The whole piece broke out. It's, it's really fragile because it's not a very thick piece, and I must have hit it or something and broke it, but it sucks. But that's what happened. So, you know, it's lost. Um, and here is the back of the cockpit area, um, which I put fiber optics in as well. I'm going to grab this and get it to light up. I'm just going to do one bundle of lights since we could be the lights on this side will light up so we can get it here. It's really difficult sometimes to get things to do what you want to do. Um, crap. So you can see here that I'm like a little lighting up now. You know it's hard to see there, you can see it. So there's those lights lighting up and that's Basically the, the same thing, this this goes, so this part will go in with the parts that I'm adding the lights to, and then this goes in behind that, so it looks like that, sort of like that, is what it's going to be like. And then, uh, so they get these two parts together. And then, I made these longer because I've now got to bend and then bring it around this part to bring it to where the other bundle of lights are going to go. So I have to run it around behind. So that's what I'm doing currently. Um, so I'll get these done and then that will be completed. Uh, that's the back back of the Millennium Falcon which is completed. Um, I showed you the computer terminal. I have a new one. I already have that printed and, and made for me. Um, somewhere I have a new terminal. Um, I also have uh, the gunnery tower parts here. Which were 3D printed for the uh, you know the gun towers where uh, Luke and, and Han were inside shooting at the uh, Tie Fighters uh, when they were escaping from the Death Star. So those are those parts I have uh, here are actually the chairs for the gunnery part here. They're in this bag here, and so those will get painted and installed and everything inside. I'll pull one out so you can actually see it. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, these are, these are the bridge chairs, I'm sorry, the chairs that go inside the cockpit, these are my cockpit chairs. These are my cockpit chairs, they're going to go inside, um, inside as well. Uh, let me slide out of the way. Let me get some better lighting going here, I'm trying to show that now. 
Let me see if that'll show a little bit. Okay, so here's one of the chairs. There's a couple of these. These are the chairs that, like Luke and uh, Leia and everybody were sitting in behind the actual chairs that uh, that Han and Chewie were in. So that's that chair. There's two of those. And then there's the actual chairs like Han and Chewie sit in. So those are the other chairs. I have two of those. So there's two of each. Those will go in the new cockpit that I'm, that I'm building. And uh, I guess I also have a new computer console here somewhere and another uh, bag of parts. So I have lots of things, that, lots of plans. Uh, I don't remember what this is. Oh, that's the new uh, computer terminal. So there's a new computer terminal. I've already spray painted it black. Uh, you can see it here. So it's not broken now. Hopefully I won't break it again. That's the new computer terminal that will get all the LEDs put in again. A lot of work to redo. So there's like, you know, probably close to 100 LED or uh, fibers that go into this. So that will get redone as well. Everything, I, everything I'm doing, I'm trying to make this thing light up and look, you know, as cool as I can make it look. Uh, there's a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort goes into it. Uh, and I, I've paid for a lot of upgraded parts that I want to, uh, and I'm going to print a whole bunch too. I have, now that I have a resin printer, I can print parts myself. Um, the actual Dejaric table, um, I have it right here. So, open up this bag. This is another upgraded 3D printed part that I can paint and there's also little holes in it for the fiber optics to go in so you can light up all these little areas along this edge here where you can see it's kind of like, kind of hard to see. So put something behind it and make it focus a little better. And there you can see the cutouts there. There's little holes all along that edge on that that you put LEDs into or uh, fiber optics into. So that's the plan. I don't. I don't know if I can feed one in here right now or not. Just to get kind of give an idea of what we're trying to do here. Let's see if I can feed it in or not. I know it's really difficult, but it's really tiny. Okay, so I got that one in. And you can see it fed in here. There we go. I got that in there. Uh, it fed through and into the bottom and it feeds from there. You go right in there just like that. And then if I want to light it up, let's see if I make that to light up or not. Can I see that or not? I can't see it. Oh, I see it lighting up, yeah. I mean, it's hard to see on camera because I can't keep it in focus because it's an autofocus camera is in a not focus where you see it's focusing on this hand and not on that hand you know so it's like why does it focus where I want it to focus but uh so anyway that's how that will work I'll take it back out to I'm not ready to do this yet so that, those are my LA, my fiber optics for the other parts that I'm currently working on and so that's where we're currently at and I won't put the fiber optics in it until I paint it because you, you can't, you don't want to paint over your uh, your fibers. That that would just mess it all up. Okay. And the other part I have, I actually have the area like the bed where Luke was laying after he lost his hand. I have that part. There's also a new part, uh, you know, upgraded part basically, and that will have. Um, that will have lights in it and everything too. You know, everything I'm doing will have fiber, fiber optic lights in it if I can. Uh, the hallway that's going to come out of the back from the, uh, as you can see, the doorway that was in the back of the of the uh, cockpit. Through that door, there, there's the hallway that goes around and goes into the area where the Zark table and the computer is and the bed and all that stuff is at. So that hallway will also be lit up inside. 
with uh, with lights. So that's all part of the plan of what I'm working on currently. So those were I bought all these parts on uh, Shapeways. So there was the, the Zarek table, you know, Harline Shapeways. Uh, so that's where I could get it at the time. I didn't have a resin printer to do my own parts, so I had so I had to farm it out and have it done. The parts are all available to the people who sell all the parts for doing all this stuff. Um, so I, I, you know, I went on and I bought some of the parts I wanted to upgrade, and I started printing my own parts. Uh, some of them I printed on my standard FDM printer, you know, a regular like Crusa i3. Uh, I don't know where the parts are right now, That's off the top of my head. But they were like the cargo hold. Um, so where the cargo hold goes, I printed little things in there. I put I put uh, an opening around. I put LEDs inside and has a square opening so they'll light up, and that will give me the lights inside the cargo hold area. And where they were uh, smuggling the holes where they smuggle stuff at, where they had equipment at, like when they were trying to troubleshoot the light drive. You know when the the uh, hyperdrive didn't work and they need to go down inside. And they're sitting there with their wrenches and working all that stuff. Um, so all that, so yeah, I'm getting a little carried away here and going too far and carrying on and on and on. Anyway, so that's that's enough of that. Um, we got what we wanted, which was to show how how I install my fiber optics in a model and random BS from me just chatting away here. So anyway, that's it. Have a good one. Build it out. See you next time.